All right, y'all. Somebody send me something good. Because I think we have it again this morning. Aaron, we miss you. <laughs> So is it a little better if I get closer to the microphone because it makes it louder in the room, or does that make it more echoey?
know, even in that song, we lean into that dichotomous nature that we have, right? And we tend to split things into binaries, men and women, young and old, but there is so much more to the grand spectrum of all God's creation. And there is so much more to life than anything that we have planned or expected. And that is a little bit of what we will talk about today. It is a little bit of what we share when we are able to gather together and sharing our prayers and our offerings. And so we celebrate that gift, the ability that when something unexpected comes along, we are able to join together in the support and fellowship of friends and faith to offer up our joys and our concerns, our hopes and desires, our griefs and our disappointments. I know that there has been a lot going on in the lives of all of our friends and members, and I'm so grateful for the ways that you open your hearts and your lives to us in sharing. I know that um, the survivors are still navigating hopes for an adoption. We continue to be in prayer for them. They are not alone in that journey, as we have others who are also fostering and adoption. We also continue to be in prayer for all those who are experiencing the threats from COVID, whether that be um, whether that be an illness in your immediate family or um, just the, the lingering possibility of exposure. That always we there's so much that we still don't know about this virus. We're grateful for all of those that have worked on creating a vaccine. We are grateful for all those who have had the courage to receive that vaccine. Um, as we move forward into health and wholeness, we hope in this coming year. Today, we also offer prayers for um, the celebrations that will take place for the remembrance of Martin Luther King Jr. and all of the necessary transitions that happen as part of the civil rights movement and all of the work that is still yet to be done, conversations to be had. We're grateful for those who help us navigate those conversations in our daily living, uh, especially for the opportunity that will be coming tomorrow as Kenyana Sunny Matthews has agreed to offer a conversation on um, some of his writings and they are relevant to today. So um, that was out of response to a desire expressed from our community here in Cairo Falls, the community that we are most immediately called to serve, and we are so grateful for the opportunity to partner in meeting that need. Um, thank you, April, for your graciousness about the finger snaps. I try and keep it to that and keep it away from the microphone. Um, because yes, there is a lot of unexpected that happens in life, and I'll be experiencing that and exemplifying it this morning myself. So, with all of that said, as we come bringing our joys and our concerns, our celebrations, our expectations, our griefs and our losses, and our uncertainties, and all that we are, we give thanks to a God who knows us better than we know ourselves. A God who lives beyond time and knows and can anticipate all that we may yet become and loves us into our best selves. So let us take a moment to pray in gratitude and thanksgiving even as we bring our, our mix of all that we are today. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the ways you continue to weave your patience and presence into our midst. We know that the example of Jesus was not the first time that you spoke into the wilderness of our life together, and it was certainly not the last. And yet, it is a voice that is echoey through our own hearts through our sense of community, through our sense of self. We give thanks for the ways that he too lived in such an unexpected manner, reaching
reaching out to those who were themselves rejected, reaching out into places where folks felt isolated, where people were impoverished, when pe where people were feeling like they were not enough, like they were less than. Help us to remember that when we feel that way, we do not need to be angry or fearful but it is an opportunity for us to be faithful. And though that can sound cliche when we say it out loud, when we say it in our hearts, in our private prayers, it gives us an opportunity to draw closer to you and to the community that cares for us in your name. And so we share all of our whole selves. We share of our hearts and our lives all that we are carrying with us in these days as we are longing for the spring of new life, as we are longing to hear more clearly our calling as disciples, help us to remember that it is not always in grandiose ways, but sometimes it is in the small and the simple. Sometimes it is in the repetition of getting up day after day and saying with a heart full of gratitude, Thanks be to God. Amen. This is also our opportunity to share of our offerings. And it's not something that we have spoken of regularly in these virtual services because we're not passing plates or baskets. And that's not something that we will likely be doing whenever we come back to in-person worship. We'll be finding another way to share our financial offerings. But it is an important and continued part of our life and ministry together. You will be receiving later this week a letter with information about our fiscal realities as a faith community. We have, um, and I should say our, our leadership team, our financial team, and our treasury team have done the good, hard work of preparing ministerial budget for the coming year based off of our calling to meet needs within this community, to provide space for um, the ministry that happens here and beyond. And the reality that we have lived into for the last five decades that once more we have not met financially the budget that we have set ministerially. Which means you have done amazing work in continuing to meet the commitment we have made. We continue to maintain our level of giving during this time of crisis. And that is extraordinary. Something to be celebrated. It also means that just as in years past, we have work still to do. So we will speak to that a bit more in this letter, but I want you to know that that will be coming. And I want to invite you that if this is a ministry that you believe in, that has touched your life, and you believe has the capacity to touch the lives of others, you are invited, you are called to participate in that by giving up your full self. And that means sharing of our tithes and offerings as well. It means also asking people to text Charlie so that he can come in and make that go away on the screen. Uh, because I can't change the slide at the moment. Um, so we want to continue to say thank you for the giving that has happened because in truth and earnest, there are churches, there are whole faith communities that would be making difficult decisions, not simply as a result of COVID, but um, perhaps more quickly because of COVID, perhaps in a more compounded fashion because of COVID, on how their ministries will transition into new life. And that may mean closing their doors. We are not yet at that place. And 
we are so grateful for that because we have this beautiful space, this holy ground. And yet, we also acknowledge that the church is not a building. The church is so much more. The church is about all of you who are watching, who are engaging, who are participating and sharing of yourselves in your day to day. So, um, give me one moment. I'm going to call for Charlie, and we're going to sing with or without lyrics. Yep, let's go. I know, you guys, I had one of these in 
my office, and you played with it and played with it, and it got lost. So thank you to Elliot and Emerson Chromis, who lent us their toy for today. Oh, actually, there's a picture of it for those of you at home. You can see it a little bit better. Thank you, Sarah, for putting that up there. This is called Jacob's Ladder. Okay? Jacob's Ladder. Not a bladder. That is, that also serves an important role in your life. I am not in this moment going to attempt to connect those things the way I normally do with the mystery box. Okay, instead, we're going to talk about the item that I brought, okay? If that's all right, since I know you guys like this. So, I would like to play with it in a second. Let's show everybody at home. I'm going to go up close a little bit so that they can see it. So, this is called Jacob's Ladder, right? It's made out of little blue blocks and ribbons. And as you flip it, it switches. And I like this one a lot because you can see when it changes color, you can see how it's going up and down. So I'm going to let you two play with this. Here you go. Okay, thanks. 
It was a very wet whisper. Okay, so let's let's add our prayers to Jesus' prayers right now, okay? Hey. Well, let's not jump to the in the name of your son on that. Let's say a little bit more, okay? Dear God, thank you for meeting us where we are. Even when we are in the middle of attacks, you remind us that we are not alone and that you sent your son to tell us so, to remind us and to um, keep us connected always. In the name of your son, we pray. Amen. All right. You can go back to my seat. Come on. You can play with this as you go. Father into 
bequeathing, we need to be giving everything to him. And then out of fear of the damage he had done to that relationship, he ran away, right? And eventually he comes to the river and he is wrestling with that reality in both figurative and literal ways to the point where in the middle of the night he is wrestling with an angel. His leg gets broken. That's how violent this experience is for him in this struggle. And in his transformation, he is rechristened. He is renamed Israel. And is told that his descendants will be as the stars in the heavens. Right? That's how many they will number. And so when we talk about things coming out of Israel, they come out of that lineage of Jacob, the deceiver. This is our heritage, too. But Jesus calls Nathaniel an Israelite without deceit. Touche. So the score in this conversational sparring about hometowns is one all. An unlikely beginning for a relationship, admittedly. But wait a minute. Nathaniel is smiling. But his mind is also racing. Because Jesus wasn't there for that snarky comment that he made. How did Jesus know what he had said? But even more than that, Nathaniel presses further saying, how did he know me? How did he know where I was from? How does he know from where I come? Jesus says he saw Nathaniel sitting under that fig tree, but it had to be an extrasensory seeing, a spiritual seeing. So Philip was right after all. And now Nathaniel is convinced, he's convicted, and those traditional phrases come pouring out of Nathaniel's mouth. You are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. And Jesus confirms it with yet another Jacob reference, this time to Jacob's ladder. He says, the angels will go up and down on the son of man. That is, upon himself. Referencing how the angels have ascended and descended in meeting Jacob where he was. He's talking now about Jacob's Experience at Bethel in Genesis 28, where heaven approached so close to earth that the inhabitants of the two realms could meet. And now in Jesus, not just in one geographical place, but in Jesus, the realm of God would come near. It was an unlikely beginning to Nathaniel's walk with Jesus, but why not? What is more unlikely than heaven touching her. The only common experience that I can think of is where lightning strikes. And this itself is bright and blinding and sometimes more than we can handle. And it's also a rarity in our personal experience. And yet in Jesus, not just in his story, but in his life and his ministry, we learn that heaven is where love reigns, where there is room for all God's children at the table, where in the words of uh, a friend of Dr. Watkins, nothing's broken and no one's missing. Doesn't that Sound like the kind of kingdom building, the kind of kingdom building that we want to be doing to bring heaven on earth as it is in, as it is in heaven. That nothing's broken and no one's missing. But that's not all what earth is like. We know what earth is like. A glance through the morning paper on any given day shows us a world that couldn't be more different than God's realm of love. War, global warming, political gridlock, children without health care. 
And yet, in Jesus, the unexpected happens. And Nathaniel sees it. Heaven gets a foothold on this earth, even if it is in the beginnings of his own heart. Sojourners Jim Wallace says, in Jesus, God hits the streets. Nathaniel, now a follower, however unlikely he may have been, will walk that street now too. I love that this passage comes up in the lectionary on this particular weekend as it leads into another unlikely beginning. The time being 1955, the place Montgomery, Alabama. The issue is forced segregation on city buses. Local pastors are gathered at Dexter Avenue Baptist Church strategizing. Rosa Parks has recently been arrested for refusing to give up her seat on the bus to a white person, and her trial will be coming soon. A lot of ideas go back and forth, but nothing clear emerges until the most unlikely thing, a young pastor of the church, new to town, unknown to the city leaders, and some say, not yet intimidated by them. A guy in his 20s raises his hand. The boy God has a leader. Young Reverend King it is. A newcomer to this circle, but like Nathaniel, he has this experience in Jesus of the reign of God come near and is now an ambassador of that place, that meeting of heaven and earth, inviting others to walk on the street where the reign of God has gotten a foothold. Most unexpected. Many years later, now very well known, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. would describe his glimpse of what it looks like when the reign of God comes near. He said, one day, every valley shall be exalted, every hill and mountain shall be made low, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed in all flesh, so we shall see it together. One day on the red hills of Georgia, the sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood. My four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. With Martin Luther King's words, through his actions, according to his dream, we could see it too. Because he had raised his hand, had stepped up to walk in that place where heaven and earth come near. Because he stepped up to walk with Jesus, it turned out that one day was unexpectedly just a little closer than we thought. It's hard to follow Jesus to those unexpected places sometimes. Too often the reign of God enters our world with a cost. Dr. King knew this too. From the unlikely location in the Birmingham jail, he wrote about a letter he had just received from a white brother urging caution, who said, All Christians know that the colored people will receive equal rights eventually, but the teachings of Christ take time to come to earth. Dr. King responded, Such an attitude stems from the strangely irrational notion that there is something in the very flow of time that will inevitably cure all ills. Actually, he said, human progress comes through the tireless efforts of persons willing to be co-workers with God. Or as our penis has said, called as partners in Christ's service. Early Christians entered the town in the conviction that they were a colony of heaven called to obey God. Small in number, they were big in commitment. By their effort and example, they brought an end to ancient evils. The time is always right to do what is right. Martin Luther King, who we will celebrate this weekend, 
helped a whole generation see where the ways of heaven begin to get an unlikely foothold on this earth. He helped us remember that walking with Jesus means working for justice, revealing in our midst already a world where love reigns, a realm of God's shalom, of wholeness, where nothing's broken and no one's missing, where a table is spread, where all are welcome. Dr. Watkins shares about an experience of that kind of welcome that she once experienced also so unexpectedly. Accompanying a group from our denomination's mission board on a trip to Congo. We were deep in the forest, she said, bumping along on nearly impassable roads with a pickup and a van. Rounding a bend, we came full stop before a large tree that had fallen right across the way. We all piled up and stood there, scratching our heads. As we so often tend to do when we come up against any kind of obstacle, there was a rustle among the trees, and I noticed a group of children, curious as children will be. Then I noticed their moms were with them, carrying parcels wrapped in brightly colored cloths. In a moment, some men were there as well, carrying machetes and knives, and a door a big wooden door. The men with the tools went straight to the tree and got to work, cutting and tugging. The others placed that door on the forest floor and suddenly, the door was a table. The women began to unwrap the parcels to reveal peanuts and bananas and orange panta. I don't know where they got that panta, she says. They Wait, spread. how did they get panta? They spread that feast, and they invited us to partake. We were strangers on the side of the road. People of that place came out to us in our need. They spread a table, and in that act of hospitality was a glimpse of God's reign come near. Karl Barth is supposed to have said, when you preach, You've got to have the Bible in one hand and the newspaper in the other. And he was right. The call of Nathaniel reminds us that when we walk with Jesus, we walk in those unlikely places where heaven and earth come near. In this fragmented world, we represent God's reign gaining a foothold here already, and our actions need to show it. An act of simple hospitality in the midst of want. A raised hand to volunteer for leadership in a community witness. An opportunity to be seen and heard. All moments, so often unexpected, where the reign of God comes near where we catch a glimpse of the time and place where nothing's broken and no one's missing and a table is spread for all God's children. May it be so. We pray with me. Dear God, thank you for Nathaniel's call of witness. Thank you for the witness of Martin Luther King Jr. And all others who have been willing to walk with Jesus in that challenging place of tension and electricity where heaven and earth come near. Give us ears to hear the call, eyes to glimpse your reign among us, and the courage to respond and hit the street with you. In Jesus' name, amen. We remember at this table that there are tables set everywhere in Jesus' name. And that at each and every one, if it is in Jesus' name, then all are welcome. Because Jesus sat at many tables with many disciples, not just on one night, not just with the twelve who shared that final feast. But over and over and over again, he invited those who 
found themselves on the fringe of society, those who were outcast and oppressed. These are Jesus' people. This is Jesus. He was not wanted. And none of us are worthy. And yet we come to this table of love. And that is what makes our meal brand. Whether you are sharing this morning in what is now cold coffee because the preacher has gone on too long. Or bread and juice. Or whatever you have on hand. It's not about the food. It's about how we are fed. And how we gather together to feed those who are still hungry and thirsty. So we come together at this table knowing that we are invited, each and every one of us, not just who are listening now, but all those to whom God is speaking in each and every moment. Let us come to the table, being drawn in the spirit. Will you sing with me our song of invitation? Draw us in the spirit's time. Let us come together with 
grace and thanksgiving to pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. May we continue to climb. 